Hey guys, this is Danny. Welcome to part three of Drambo MIDI sequencing in AUM for koalas. Um, and as you can see, I've actually got koala up this time. Um, what I wanted to talk about today in part three is um, modulation, uh, parameter locking, and automation. Um, they're three different ways of manipul manipulating your um, CC values. Uh, to do different things in your sequencing. And really, this is probably the most important part of this whole thing, um, as far as being able to manipulate all the plugins and AUM itself um, with Drambo as a sequencer. So um, there's quite a bit to cover in each subsection, so I'm going to split them up into three. And um, I'm going to start with modulation. So first thing I want to do is open um, the MIDI CC generator multi like we did in the first um, part. And as I showed in the first part, if you double tap, you can actually change a CC number. I'll, I'll actually go through mapping Koala to match in a later lesson. So don't worry about that too much. But if you click MIDI CC generator, you can click presets and you will probably want to import the preset that I will share um, in the description. But once you do, you'll have this koala effect. So one thing you'll notice is that there's all this is is a CC generator multi where I've just added the knobs, name them and map them to match my mapping. Um, so if you you'll just notice that when you load a preset, it doesn't actually change the um, text on the first knob. If you double tap it, you'll see that the name is actually there, but it just didn't update. So if you just OK that, then it fixes it. So the only other thing we need to do then is make Drambo control Koala. And at that point, we'll see that these knobs actually do what they're told. Um, just a little note that the these read top left to bottom right so crush pitch comb ring so where they go across in koala they actually go down and across um, in drambo so that's just some housekeeping really and so what you want to do uh, to create a modulator is put it to the left of Koala, um, of the CC generator. It doesn't have to be Koala necessarily, but the CC generator, to the left of that, you can go to the modulator section. And in that, you've got LFOs, envelopes, um, and some other ones. Uh, the most common ones you'll probably want to use is maybe a, an LFO graphic modulator. I'll go through some of these um, not all the LFOs, they don't all individually need to be gone through. But um, what it will load is an oscilloscope from the utilities, which will let us see what the LFO is actually doing. So you can control the frequency of the LFO. Now, what, you, what you'll notice is that this is a bipolar LFO. So it's going the full range of minus one to one with the line showing the zero point. If you change that to a unipolar LFO, it will go from zero to a, to one, um, and that will represent the zero to one two seven, which works great for uh, manipulating anything that doesn't start in the middle, like the filter and the pitch. But um, so, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you just tap any knob, you can select an output as a modulator. And in this case, you'll see that the LFO has got a little squiggly line at the bottom, which you can tick on. Boop. And that creates a knob which lets you stick that LFO as a modulator for, in this case, the crush. If I turn that up 100, you'll see that it's actually going through the full range and then you can actually change the amount that the LFO is affecting the crush just by changing uh, this knob. So if it was actually 
going top to bottom you could actually reverse it but in this case reversing it won't work but anyway what you need to do in order to actually use this for pitch for example or filter if I go to filter and use the same thing you'll see because it's unipolar it's actually going from the 50% mark up to the top uh, it's reaching the top halfway through uh, at 0.5 which is why it's sitting um, it's sitting at 100% for a really long time well half the time and then it goes back down again so what you need to do is actually in the case of a, a an effect like pitch and filter where the zero point is actually central which is um, actually value 64 rather than 0 to 127 uh, 0 should be the very bottom and 127 should be the very top whereas this is actually sending out 0 to 127 um, what we need to do is offset this value so if we go to uh, in here I forget where it is so it's always handy to just search for it offset I think it's in the math section actually there you go maths one operator math section so if you click offset now we want to make sure that the offset is also because at the moment you'll see it's doing the it's automatically routed itself to the tracks input we want to actually offset the LFO so I'm just going to click on the LFO squiggly line and then I'm going to reduce it by 0.5 which means that it's going to go from sorry minus 0.5 it's going to go from minus 0.5 to 0.5 and you can see that in the oscilloscope if I show the offset instead of the LFO itself so the value of the LFO is exactly the same but the range has now been reduced with the central point being the zero and it means that if if you look at the filter if I remove this and I instead have the offset mapped to the filter it's now going up and down and matching the crush speed because they're the same LFO I'll put that on the pitch so you can see that next to it and in this case if you offset in reverse it's actually sending the LFO signal in reverse which is why they're going against each other so and again this is some a way you can modulate lots of different things based on the same timing information um, just by using the same LFO but sending it in different amounts to different things so if you want one to be reversed you can do all this sort of stuff so that's LFOs and offsetting use the oscilloscope it's really handy um, just to see what's actually happening so the next thing um, group of modulators I want to talk about is the graphic modulator which basically an LFO and a, and a modulator all, the, all these in the LFO section run on their own at a set frequency without having the um, the actual AUM session playing um, they're just constantly running so if I go to graphic modulator you'll see that there's a line going across now in this case if you click on the graphic modulator you'll get to this section which is very similar to what we're going to talk about in automation later on but it's just a separate thing that is sitting inside this graphic modulator box so I may as well talk about some of these tools now this triangular tool allows you to grab the line and drag it which creates this kind of thing and then when you stick your finger anywhere above or below the actual line not where the dot is but the actual line you can curve it so that means it's really quick and easy to create quite interesting shapes um, if you tap a dot you get rid of it if you use this eraser you can just get rid of the whole thing um, I'll go in a bit more detail on this later um, when I'm talking about automation because this is how you will do automation but basically this allows you to create effectively a custom LFO shape uh, which does quite cool stuff so let's have a look at that on the oscilloscope and what you'll see is that as it going across 
it's actually drawing out the graphical shape that we had before. Um, it's going to have the same issue because it's going from 0 to 127. It's going to have the same issue as um, we had with a pitch uh, with the LFO. Um, so again, if you want to use this on a um, something that is going from the central point down and up instead of from 0 to 127 up, uh, you'll need to go to the maths one op and offset and so if we look at that now and go to minus 0.5 again now if I stick that offset to the pitch they'll actually be working the same way so that's quite an important thing to know um, now what you can also do obviously is I've I've been modulating the uh, Koala FX CCs at the moment but what you can actually do is any knob that's got the little grey triangle next to it can also be modulated so for example this rate can go up and down so that means you could actually put in an LFO, put another mo modulator, and in this case an LFO, and then you can just, for example, let's change the rate using the LFO. So we'll change the frequency of that. Now you'll see the sh sh change of shape in the oscilloscope based on the changes that we're doing to the LFO. And you can see the effects going up and down crazy. So you can do these things um, with sound coming through, obviously, and then resample it and see what you come up with in that respect. Um, if it's going a bit too much, you can just change the amount. You can change the rate. Um, so let's um just have a quick look at uh the what envelope section of the modulators is um so under envelopes you've got adsr which you might be familiar with is is the attack delay sustain um on the other one <laughs> um release which I just blanked on. And um, basically that allows you to create what you saw in the graphical um, uh, thing, shape, basically. Uh, let's get an oscilloscope up again. And then, so now the thing is with the envelopes is they are triggered by incoming MIDI. So you'll see that the gate and the velocity have been mapped to the gate and velocity of an incoming MIDI to CV. And what that means is when you actually, uh, let's get a keyboard up, when you touch the keyboard, it will draw the shape and the height of that shape is based on, I'm hitting the key low or high, um, the shape of it is based on the velocity. Um, what are we doing here? Oh, I accidentally clicked the, the arrow at the top of the keyboard, which stops it actually sending notes. Now, this will work on both incoming MIDI and on um, MIDI that is um, sequenced. So if I put a rhythmic MIDI here and then play is going to get triggered every time it goes past. Um, so that's with a slow attack, it's actually taking too long to build up and you can change the shape. And then again, this envelope ADSR can be used as a modulator. So same things apply with the offset. So this is a similar thing to using the graphic, actually. Um, and, in fact, there is also a graphic... Um, there's a graphic uh, envelope, which is similar to the not graphic envelope. It works pretty much the same way, except it's triggered by incoming MIDI. So if I stop the time, 
you'll see that it's actually, if I stop the track, sorry, it's stopped playing and that means the knob's not just constantly moving like it does when a, with an LFO. Uh, what you will notice with the LFO and with the graphic modulator LFO is that it does have an option to have a gate um, and basically what that means is that the gate will re-trigger the LFO. So if you actually want incoming MIDI to re-trigger the LFO, you can assign it to the incoming MIDI's trigger. And now you'll see the shape based on this track's playing. If I stop the track playing, it will just look normal. And if I play in some incoming MIDI, if I play it too fast for it to actually get across, you'll see that the LFO is actually being re-triggered from from scratch now if i remove that by triple clicking it and then click disconnect hitting these does nothing so that's adding a gate so wherever you see this little top hat type gate um, signal it means that you can actually make it react to incoming midi gates um, right so i don't know how long this video has been gone on um, I've talked about LFOs, graphical modulation, envelopes, retriggering, and modulating modulators. Um, so I think that pretty much covers modulators at this point. Um, I'm going to move on to parameter locking, and I'll see you in the next section.